knowing what you're consuming, knowing the doses, getting it tested, um, just educating yourself on basic harm reduction. And this is why I appreciate like the rave community so much is that in general, people are pretty responsible and like know mm. their stuff because you have to be if you want to be safe you have to know what has interactions you have to know how much a dose is you have to know how to time your doses with certain things right so that psycho education is like non-negotiable for anyone yeah like, I, I think that's a blanket statement it is a non-negotiable i i think of it as like if if partying with substances is an action sport knowledge is your surfboard welcome to the modern psychedelics podcast thank you so much for being here and choosing to spend some time with me today i'm your host lana this is the place where we explore how modern humans can work with psychedelics and plant medicine to engage more deeply with life you can expect balanced and grounded conversations around therapeutic spiritual and recreational containers all right Let's journey. When it comes to psychedelics, my roots are actually in rave culture. It was the rave scene, electronic music, and festivals that introduced me to the world of altered states. The dance floor is my home just as much as the ceremony room is, and MDMA is my medicine just as much as ayahuasca and iboga are. And I am getting older, yet I refuse to stop going to raves. But there are obviously neurotoxicity issues to be aware of with MDMA. And I'm all about partying safe and smart. So there are some rules that I follow, such as absolutely no alcohol. I hydrate really hard with electrolytes. And my newest discovery is Roll Kit. Roll Kit makes it possible for me to keep partying without the awful come down. This is just a brilliant product. Roll Kit is a supplement packet that provides the most complete protection against the side effects of MDMA for a better week ahead. It's made in a CGMP compliant facility in New York, and they donate 20% of sales to MAPS. Roll Kit is backed by research, and research shows that timing matters. That's why each Roll Kit includes three timed packets. So you take a packet of supplements before, during, and after your roll. The formulation includes antioxidants and minerals, which work together to exert protection against neurotoxic side effects. It also helps to avoid serotonin deficits and support its generation. I have been using Roll Kit for over six months now, and I have noticed a huge Huge difference in my mood, energy, and bounce back after a roll. Gone are the days when it would take me literally up to two weeks to bounce back. There truly is a way to party smart and safe, and Roll Kit is a key ingredient in my Rave Mama toolkit. I no longer need to buy a bunch of supplements separately. I can just use Roll Kit, though I do like to supplement with additional ALA for about a week after a roll. So if you're all about raving smart and safe or using MDMA responsibly, get yourself some Roll Kits today and grab some for your rave fam too. Visit RollKit.net and use Lana at checkout to save 10%. So that's RollKit, R-O-L-L-K-I-T.net and use Lana, L-A-N-A, at checkout to save 10%. RollKit.net. So stay safe, be smart, and have fun out there. Hello, hello. Welcome to Modern Psychedelics. So this is the place where we talk about all things psychedelics and forward momentum, getting unstuck um, wherever you are in your journey, whether you're healing or whether you're over the healing hump and, you know, creating forward momentum. My goal here is to really provide you with the conversations that will inspire you to get unstuck, to keep moving forward, and to really, at the heart of it, create a more meaningful and deeper experience here on this beautiful planet we call Earth. So if you're new here, I started this podcast almost three years ago to document my journey with psychedelics. I was definitely deep in the healing chapter, and I'm no longer there, but I'm continuing to, you know, create content that I'm excited by and that I'm interested in. And I'm so excited to be bringing a conversation, another conversation around recreational containers with psychedelics today. This is something that is so dear to me because 
It was actually within rave culture and recreational containers that I first discovered psychedelics. And if I didn't go through that, I don't think I would have even been open to try psilocybin in a ceremonial setting or go to ayahuasca or iboga, which, you know, has done so much for me. So I like I said, I like sharing what I'm interested in with you all because that's where my energy is. And there is definitely a lot of judgment, misconceptions, just misunderstanding about recreational containers. And I am just so passionate about writing those judgments and addressing those misconceptions. And while there are certainly some recreational containers that can be unhealthy and toxic and draining to our energy, there are plenty that are beautiful, meaningful, deep, peak experiences that help us to learn more about ourselves. And I want to encourage everyone out there to embrace whatever it is they're interested or drawn to. Uh, we do not have to fit ourselves into boxes. You can do ceremony and you can do raves. <laughs> Something that it took me a long time to learn how to do, but you can, you can do psychedelics however you want. The key is psychoeducation, safety, and all of the things that are important for psychedelics. So today my video producer and also one of my best friends, Kev, is joining me for this beautiful conversation. Kev was in episode 47 where we kind of debriefed our Shambhala festival experience. He is now video producing the podcast. So I wanted you guys to also to get to know him. And um, he definitely has this beautiful party spirit and energy that he brings to every day of his life. And I have honestly learned so much about him and he has opened up so much for me. So I definitely wanted to share his spirit and his wisdom and his perspectives uh, with you all. It's a really fun conversation. You know, we're really good friends, so it's really casual. It's fun. It's uh, unfiltered in many ways. And I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. One thing that we didn't address in this episode, if you guys listened to the last episode with Jen Chesik, she talks about how for women or people who are assigned female at birth, our menstrual cycles can play an impact about um, around our trip experiences. And she talks about how during our bleed time as women, we require a lot more energy to be focused on the womb and how it might not be a good idea to trip or go on full journeys during this time. Well, I just returned from a music festival called Bloom and I had a beautiful time. Um, and I was actually on my period during the first two days. And I can honestly say that, wow, I definitely felt the difference. It took a lot longer for my body to bounce back. I felt a lot more energetic drained. So I think that's something that people can consider, um, whether it's ceremonially or recreationally, but I definitely felt that difference. So enjoy this conversation. And last thing before I go, I want to invite anyone listening who is interested in microdosing psychedelics to come to a workshop that Jenny from Wakeful Travel and I are hosting on September 6th. I really hope to see you guys there. It's going to be really fun. It's going to be a great time for us to all connect and we're going to be delivering a workshop and really valuable content around how to access the energy of flow over force within your microdosing protocol. We're going to be talking a little bit about flow formula, our microdosing program. We're going to be doing a live giveaway. So sign up using the link in the show notes and I really, really hope to see you guys there. It's going to be re really valuable for whether you're an experienced microdoser looking for some new perspectives and tools, or if you're just getting started on your journey. All right, let's get into this very exciting episode. And thank you so much to the sponsors of today's show, Roll Kit and Flow Toys. They are both definitely very, very valuable and beautiful tools in my raving toolkit. So check them out, support them. It means so much to me that you guys support the sponsors who actually make it possible for me to continue doing this podcast and to continue up leveling the quality. So enjoy, love you so much, and I'll catch you in the interview. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. We're going to have a really fun conversation today. We're continuing the recreational psychedelics series here, which I hope you guys are enjoying. I'm here with Kev. What up? <laughs> what up, fam? Do you want to just introduce pe yourself to people? Yeah, uh, my name is Kev G, and I am a uh, semi-professional partier. <laughs> uh, uh, it's it's part of my life mission. Can vouch? Yes, can vouch. Um, 
the semi-professional part is not true, but I do take it serious. Um, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a creative professional, but I also like to have fun and, uh, yeah, I really, I take, I take fun seriously and I think that's what we're, we've bonded over. Yes. Yes. You brought out so much fun inside of me that just like wanted to come out and I'm so grateful for that. And it's crazy that we've only known each other for a year. Like we became such good friends Mm -hmm. so fast and we're working together now. So for people listening, Kev is video producing the podcast. Yep. Yeah. Me and the team at Film with Integrity are uh, are up leveling the production on Lana's show and yeah, helping it, helping it reach your ears with maximum velocity. Yes. That's why it's been sounding and looking so good. And how are you enjoying it? Uh, I enjoy it very much. Yes. Uh, Be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's part of our credo. Like it's the whole reason I got into making media was to put out messages that I wanted that I support into the world. So like, yeah, like learning about your show. Um, and when I approached you to like help produce it, I was like, this is mission oriented work for me so i am enjoying it very much yes yeah yeah, yeah thank you for trusting in uh, in us and in, and in me thank you for trusting in the podcast I and tr- in me i have faith yeah so i'm really stoked for our conversation today we're going to be talking about yeah just taking this journey of recreational psychedelics deeper uh this was triggered by me having a coaching session about a year and a bit ago with my coach where i was like just starting to get back into recreational psychedelics and recreational spaces and i was coming from a time where i had done a lot of healing but before and then i was partying and i I was in recreational settings a lot but in really unhealthy ways Mm. And I wanted to get like really clear around how I want to treat these recreational experiences and Mm. create boundaries. So I worked with my coach to create these like list of boundaries. So we're going to have a conversation today about how to have like really healthy boundaries to make the most out of these spaces. And then also we're going to get into some tips for keeping things safe and fun. So Mm -hmm. let's get into it. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Love that for us. Yeah, I, I really think there's like a way to enjoy recreational spaces. Well, the the idea of boundaries, it's like it's like outlining your playpen. It's like yeah. if you didn't have boundaries, what do you have? You just have infinite void in all directions. Yeah. And I mean, that might sound fun, but like there's also like there's limits, you know, and it's it's almost like you're, if you're skiing, like, you know, if you're on a hill, like the trees are your boundaries, like mm-hmm. go around the trees. Yeah. Other, otherwise, you're gonna hit them. Yeah. Shit's like Sonny Bono. <laughs> yeah, that's a great way to think about it. Like, what what's kind of like the 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 playpen, the gate, the the walls of how you want to experience these spaces. Mm-hmm. And I think just taking the time to like even think about boundaries and how you want to approach these spaces brings so much intentionality to them. And as we know, intention is so important with psychedelics no matter what setting you're in for sure. And like, even, even as you're saying, like creating spaces and, and like boundaries don't have to be restrictive. Like they, yeah. they, they aren't restrictive if you treat them right. Like even if you want to have a big wild night of like infinite possibility, like there's still boundaries there. Like, are you going to commit a felony? Are you going to do harm to another? Are you going to like intentionally get yourself like physically harmed? Like, yeah. no, of course not. So there's some boundaries and yeah. they, they enable the fun. Yeah. 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 And they, they allow the fun to take place in a safe way that doesn't drain your energy in life. Like my goal is to integrate these experiences mm. with the rest of my life. Right. So how can I do that in a way that like supports everything that I'm doing so that my life doesn't just get consumed by partying? Right? Yeah, for sure. And, and like, not even just like not drain you, but energize you. Yes. Like what does an energizing party experience look yeah. like? Like base coast. Like base coast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we just had a ex- really amazing festival experience at base coast in BC mm. together like a month ago. And I remember when we came back, like, I don't know about you, but I was so energized. I was mm. definitely sporting that afterglow. Like it just like filled me up and every way and i think that's because i respected 
my own boundaries and mm. I played within them. Mm, yeah. Was it the OLG, uh, their slogan, know your limits, play within it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. We can borrow that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's get into some of these. Um, I'm going to share like what I came up with and then Kev will. Yeah. I'll yeah. Color commentate. Yeah. Which you're great at. So the number one thing that I set out for myself was this is something that is meant to enhance already good things in my life. So by that, I mean, I don't want to go to recreational spaces to make myself feel better if I'm going through a challenging time. I've done that before. And these spaces were not the place for me to lean on for that kind of support. So I'm just like really mindful before a party, before a festival, like, how I'm feeling, what I'm going through. Is there any hint of like wanting to numb something uncomfortable? So just having like some awareness around that. Yeah, good vibes only. Yeah. In a way. <laughs> well, I mean, not about like starting starting out starting out positive. Like aiming yeah. aiming going towards not running away from mm -hmm. is is important. Because yeah. I mean if you're if you're if you're having an experience, I mean you're setting off on a journey. And, and especially if you use a substance, it's going to accelerate that journey yeah. in any number of ways. And it's, it's important to reflect on whether you are wanting to go to somewhere or away from somewhere. Yes. And if, you're, and, and if you realize that all you're going to go away from somewhere, if you're trying to run away, hide, escape, yeah. you know, like, and hey, it's tricky because like escaping, escapism is normalized. In society, like there's br like part of some festivals branding is like escape from your regular life, right. like escape to this wonderland. And yeah. it's, you know, it's not, it's not healthy to escape. Yeah. That's, that's like the beginning of like yeah. poor re substance relationships. Yeah. And I think like back in the day when I did not have healthy relationships with recreational spaces. And by that, I mean, I was literally like wanting to escape my life and numb and that was the only fun thing in my life that I could go right. towards um like I just I didn't even have the awareness that I was doing that until after when I had mm. time to reflect on it yeah the 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 party or the the substance was like a coping mechanism absolutely for like yeah. anxiety or fear yeah boredom yeah, and I totally had like substance abuse with mm -hmm. certain things. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful that I went through that, but I, I definitely learned from it. And I don't want to approach parties with that energy anymore. Mm. Yeah. And then one of the other ones that I have here is recreational is strictly recreational. So for me, that just means like, I just keep it out of the work zone. Personally, I know there can be like um, ways to enhance creativity and productivity and oh, workflow. You're, you're talking substance. Here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Substance. Like. Okay. Because mindset <laughs> is like the recreational mindset, like fun, fun party mode mindset can can definitely like boost. Oh yeah. Work. You know. Yeah, yeah. Like work and party, but yeah. But you're saying like substances you're you don't mix work with no i don't I any don't. which substances do you mix work with because i know microdosing, microdosing yeah mushrooms yeah. but to me that's not like a recreational thing mm. right so that's I get, so interesting because it's like so th that's substance and like mindset because your mushroom microdose or or lsd I'm, i think you've mentioned you've, yep. you've done both um that's that's a work thing mm -hmm. or, and it can be a work thing. Yeah. Um, some people, I mean, Hey, just last weekend I was at a festival. I microdosed on both of those yeah. things and it was, it was party mode. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's important to like discern substance from yeah. setting, yeah. I guess. Yeah. So yeah. your recreational substances are, are not to be mixed with work mode for you. Yeah. I mean, if we're, maybe if we're doing party news at a festival, <laughs> <laughs> Yes. but I think with this one, my intention behind this boundary was like to keep in mind that like work is always my priority and like to always be thinking about like I have clients that I need to show up for. I have to be in shape to, you know, do what I do I think for work. I'm, right. For, for your work. Yeah. I think what I'm hearing there is that like y your substance um, 
you're keeping like work separate from party um and and then the intention you use the substance with is is going to be different when you're partying versus when you're doing yeah. work and that's a healthy boundary to yeah. help you have like compartmentalization yeah 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 that's great yeah yeah anything else you want to add to that how do you i mean i've got that? a different i mean everyone has a different relationship to to substances and i think like it's it's definitely important not to like just party while you work <laughs> you know um but i also i mean my life is different in that i i'm trying to incorporate um so many elements of party mindset into my life and so like i mean what what does it mean to party mm -hmm. is it that you are um like living free like trying to live your best life is it that you are like um outward outwardly expressing joy or like encouraging others are you more playful are you like joking around is there shenanigans involved like you know like a lot of that stuff I mean, geez, I could use a lot of that in my day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be like that at work, but still task-oriented. Yeah. I mean, hey, when I party, I'm task-oriented too. Yeah, and we, we've had a we had a bunch of missions at Base Coast. I <laughs> so like many to, errands. <laughs> I like to do stuff when I yeah. party. I get kind of bored if I don't yeah. have a mission. Protect the resources. <laughs> protect the resources. Yeah, I, I like to stash little stuff around, little yeah. hammock zones and stuff. Yeah, the re resources are important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, if you're aware of the, the boundaries, whether they're really fixed, like it sounds like they are for you or whether they're, they're fluid, like they are for me, it's important to be aware. Yeah. So it doesn't tip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like for both of the work that we do, like substances, psychedelics are like a huge part of what we do. So I think like having mm -hmm. some sort of boundary around that is really important. And I think that leads into my next point here, which is that, the partying, the recreational stuff just can't get in the way of work and life and responsibilities and family. I've had, and like, this is the thing about boundaries, like they're so personal to us. These come from me having a previous relationship with this stuff that wasn't healthy. So these are the boundaries uh. that I have created for myself to keep it healthy. So like, that's always number one, like Partying is not my number one priority in life. Like, yes, having fun is really important, but it cannot get in the way of my other responsibilities. So I'm always keeping like such a watchful eye on myself after a festival, after a party. Like, okay, how am I showing up for work? How am I showing up for my family? How am I showing up in my relationships? Like, is this, did I push it too hard to the point where I need to pull back a little bit so that it's not affecting the rest of my life mm, that reminds me of a great phrase i used to keep myself in check with just like work and life in general is like um the idea of not work life balance but work life rhythm Ooh. and what is the rhythm what is yeah. the cadence of your work in your life yeah. how do they interplay yeah 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 Love that yeah i think i found a really cool rhythm recently where it is playing and it is working and I'm like really finding my way. And I believe that's possible for everyone. Again, coming from someone who was like over consumed by partying and like would go back to school on a Monday and I just like wasn't able to do my work because I went too hard. I was doing the wrong substances right. for me. I wasn't following any sort of intentionality with it. And, and and I know that at the time you would have called that partying, but I almost would want to like put a late, like a, um, a label on it um to give it a bit more of a fun like a nuance because like partying broadly doesn't have to make you suck at school like it may have been like unconscious partying or like overindulgent yeah. partying or well it was numbing partying and numbing and was, escapism yeah. mm -hmm. it's like a really hard time in life and i just didn't have any other tools i mm -hmm. had nothing mm -hmm. so mm. yeah i love that i uh, i wonder is there anything are there any insights that you have from um like integration after all of your like medicine work that has helped you with the process of like integrating a festival experience. I mean, they're both journeys. And so yeah. like, is there, are there any similarities or, or hacks that you've found doing integration work for both of those? Yeah. I think like one of the points we're going to mention later is just like exactly that like debriefing <laughs> like we always talk about like mm. after a party at the end i'm always like let's go have a debrief like let's go mm. get some food and do a debrief i think like doing like the party debrief 
with your friends. I'm just I'm just recalling a debrief we had in an Uber once. Do you remember this? Yeah. After yeah, and we were just the like debrief is key. Yeah, the debrief is key. Like, Even if you happened? just find some key themes and say them yeah. out loud. Yeah, that's the start of that integration process. Like, what happened? What did you like? What did you not like? What did you learn about yourself? Like, how was the dancing? How was the music? Yeah. Um, that's the start Stuff of it. Stuff to remember. Yeah. Next time, bring yeah. more cash. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cash is king. Don't lose your Vic stick. Don't lose your Vic stick. <laughs> don't stick it in your Vic. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, let's, we'll definitely revisit that okay. topic because yeah, okay. I think that's, that's, that is, part of keeping these spaces intentional Mm -hmm. is the integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love that. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, So the other point I have here is to maintain other hobbies and interests. Mm. (laughs) That's contentious. Right. (laughs) And it all bleeds into each other. Unless you're a DJ. Yeah. Uh Yeah. Uh Yeah. But like all of us are multifaceted. Like Mm -hmm. I'm sure even DJs have other interests and hobbies outside of the dance floor. Right. Like I really am intentional to explore my other hobbies and interests. Like I really don't want like partying and raving is so much fun that it's so easy to just like become about that and like fully Mm -hmm. about that and all about that Mm -hmm. and again i've been there before so i have like so many other hobbies unrelated like like i've been sewing a lot recently okay and i make like some rave clothes (laughs) cool (laughs) but so it's kind of connected but just like maintaining other hobbies and interests so like sewing and reading and exercise or yoga whatever but just like making sure that i'm remaining the multifaceted person that i am Mm-hmm. Balance and synergy is yeah. is a big one for me when I'm thinking about the the activities that make up my life because I you know the way that you maybe make make clothes and then but you're also making rave clothes mm-hmm. like some of the hobbies I have relate to the way I do I mean party news is a like media project I have that is born out of my like creative urge to document yeah and then when i'm in a party setting i'm still getting that creative urge so i'm just leaning towards it and um utilizing it in that space so there's crossover there you know i don't have a strict boundary where i'm like i'm not going to touch a camera or a notepad when i'm in party (laughs) mode yeah definitely not it's like that fuels it actually yeah Yeah. and this is the thing like we're talking about that rhythm and like how it can Mm. work with your life and integrate into your life but in a healthy way sure sure yeah and like yeah maybe three or four or five things can all work together but some sometime you'll have to fade one of those layers out and bring in the you know family time like maybe your family like really doesn't get party mode Mm -hmm. and that's fine you just need to be in a different state of mind to connect with those people and Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. And on that note, it's also like so important to maintain all your relationships, because I think when you get like deep into the rave culture as we are, it's like really tempting to just surround yourself with those people. Yeah. And for me, it's really important to like also connect with like my other friends who aren't into that just to like. Yeah, to to keep that connection open and keep that diversity, that multidimensionality of who we are. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's a great tip, even just for like life, is to like keep a broad network of yeah. friends and acquaintances. Yeah, as long as it feels like authentic and good, and mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. it's not being forced. Yeah, so yeah, maintain other hobbies and interests. That's maintain like other really, hobbies and interests. Really important to me. I'm learning a lot about you, Lana. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I learned that you sew. Yeah, I can't believe you didn't know that. I'm going to have to sew you, like, something. Yeah, can you sew me a a, 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 a hat? A hat? I, I haven't done a hat yet. Maybe, maybe a cool hood or something. I've seen bucket hat patterns, so... Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. Can do... Dealer's choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do some, like, party news bucket hats or yeah, something. Yeah, okay, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so my next point is to space out events. So, for example, not going out two weekends in a row. I will say <laughs> that I've been way more lenient about this in the summer because it's summer and it's fun and there's just so much going on. Um, but just, like, yeah, just being mindful to not, like, 
This goes along with the last point of maintaining other hobbies and interests, like also having space for things that aren't partying, things that aren't like recreational psychedelics and like keeping the parties kind of like spaced out, I find really helps. And when we were at the last DOCD event, I remember one of our friends, like we had just come back from Base Coast and he was like, he said something that really stuck, stood out to me that we were just like kind of at the back, like looking at the the party, which was so fun and great. And he was like, you know, if like, if you're ever at one of these events and it feels like it's not special anymore, it's mm. time to step back because this is special. And mm. I think that goes really well with this, with this point. Like you want to keep it special. You don't want to keep it so that it's just like part of your routine and just like something that you're doing on default because it's what you do, mm -hmm. right? Like keeping it special. I love that. I, I would I would say that a great phrasing would be to just pace yourself. Yeah. And whatever that means for you, because uh, yeah. you know, if it's every couple weekends or once a month, um, I mean, I think it depends on how you party too. Because like, for example, um, in the last year or so, I've been. I've seen more sunrises in the last <laughs> right? 365 days of my life than I have yeah. the first, I'm 34 yeah. now, like in the first 33 years, like I haven't like combined, I've seen more sunrises this year. And so like I'm sending it like all night a lot of the time, like not necessarily on purpose, but like my boundary of like, it's two o'clock, it's time to go home. It doesn't apply. Like I haven't really been thinking about that. And, uh, you know, it's a combination of factors. The people I'm around don't really have bedtimes, you know? So like when I party, I'm actually skipping a night of sleep mm -hmm. or I'm moving it later. Yeah. I'm sleeping from 6 a.m. to 12 p.m. And, um, you know, anyone who's done shift work will tell you like, you know, moving your circadian yeah. rhythm is quite difficult and it can have lasting negative impacts. Uh, yeah, I guess all of that is to say is that if you're, if you're partying till sunrise, every weekend that's like a different case than if you're like you know checking out an event from six to midnight every weekend yeah. and you're not going crazy with any substances and you know you can maintain that pace yeah better than if you're going ham yeah 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 like we had like once a month rave club <laughs> once a month rave club in the winter because i think that is like in the winter your energy is completely different. Like, yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm like much more in work mode, yeah. like hibernation mode. So that like once a month sunrise and party, like just hits the spot. Yeah. It's just, it's nice. Once it's a like, month's a great, great rhythm. Yeah. Following your energy, following the season, like summer is high energy. Summer is high energy. Summer is go, go, go. So it just makes sense that like you're more open. Yeah, I mean, we're coming at you from Toronto and like it's very winter when it's when uh -huh. it's winter, it's winter. For like 6 months. Yeah, 6 months yeah. you can't go outside in a t-shirt. So yeah. like that means half the year you're kind of like energy managing based on weather. Yeah. I mean, shit, I don't know what my life would be like if I was in like Portland or, you know, California, LA, like every day is a summer day. Yeah. I don't know. I hear, I hear that people just lose track of time. Anyone who's from, from California and who parties, just let us know what it's yeah. like to live that way. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you don't want to go out in the winter when it's cold. Ah, yeah. You don't want to, I don't want to deal with coat check. Yeah. 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 So I think, I think this point's like about energy management energy and following management. your energy, yeah, right? Pace, pace yourself, whatever, whatever that means at, in, in whatever phase of life you're in. Yeah. 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 And then, um, this is kind of a weird one, but I actually really like it. Um, just because like the connection between electronic music and <laughs> drugs is just so strong in these party settings. I, I have this, I don't know if it's a boundary, but I have it here just to continue to enjoy music sober, um, mm. to kind of like weaken that link and connection so that it's not like, oh, I can only enjoy this music or like this is so connected to me that like it needs to go hand in hand with substances. <laughs> so for me, that's yeah. like, that's like, yeah, like I'll just like throw on some music at home and dance to it or like listening to music in the car, finding new artists, maybe even going to a show or an event and like not, not maybe not fully sober, but like not fully sending it too. I think doing that is a great way to get the most mileage out of your experience. Like any like 
transcendent or like high watermark, like wowza experiences you have when you're partying of any kind, like try to access that feeling again, using different elements of the setting you were in, but not the same like physical state. And see if you can get there or see if you can just still enjoy it. Yeah. Like, or have a ha, experience it in a different way. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Whatever Another that. angle. Revisit that song that really oh. got you so juiced. Yes. And see if it still gets you. Yeah. There's a couple of songs, man. There's a couple of Zed's Dead tunes that <laughs> if I put on, I can always yeah. feel the same feeling yeah. that I felt the first time. Yeah. And like, I, I, it's like those experiences create shortcuts in your brain and you can access that state just by playing the music. Mm -hmm. And like, to me, that's magic. Cause like, I don't have to go invest all that time and energy and and tax my body in the same way to get the same kind of mental state. And that's, that's of great interest to me Mm -hmm. because now that's a tool. Yeah. You know, I'm not, not to be like really like rational, like resource management about it. But like, if I ever need to like get a boost, yeah. I know that if I, I need if I need a shot of adrenaline, I'll put on this song yeah. that I know will give me adrenaline. Yeah. And I'm good to go. Yeah. For whatever. So well said. It's, yeah. It creates a shortcut in your brain mm-hmm. to, to access that feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like the best after a festival or an event when just like looking through your Shazams yeah. <laughs> and then revisiting the songs. Uh, so good. Yeah. So good. Yeah, you're a Shazammer. Yeah. That's oh, sick. yeah. Are you not? Uh, you're too in the moment. <laughs> I, no, I've I've like tried it a few. You know, Shazam never really did it for me because it wasn't connected to like Apple Music or whatever for a long time. Now yeah. it's good. I just got out of the habit, really. Yeah, yeah, cool. Send me your Shazams yeah. next time. I didn't know you were. I'll send you a screenshot. Them. Yeah, cool. <laughs> DJ Lana over here, sick. You know, I dated this guy once who was a DJ, and I like was kind of learning to. DJ. Oh wow, cool. <laughs> It was very basic, but it was it was fun. Yo, bring it out. That stopped. <laughs> the next episode is going to be a one no, hour mix. No, it's not. Okay, a thirty minute mix. <laughs> no. All right, it's a not. ten minute mix. I stick to podcasting. Okay. No. <laughs> All right. You're going to curate and a playlist. enjoying en- yeah playlists. I have like over a hundred playlists easily on oh, Spotify. There you go. You'll drop some. I'll share them with you. Sh- yeah. You'll find them in the show notes. Yeah, lots of liquid drum and bass tracks. Mm. Like I got a bank. Liquid. Of those. Yeah. Okay. The seventh one here. So I'm not someone who like someone will offer a new substance to, and I'm just like, okay, sure. (laughs) Uh. And I think, yeah, I think for me personally, like I'll try to wait. Like if I get the, the desire to try something new, like I really want to do my research before and like understand it and just give it some breathing room before actually trying it know your substance know your dose yeah know what you're taking know how much you're taking know what's going to do to you yeah yeah don't just go willy-nilly into the dark night yeah with stuff i mean this this is i mean this is one of the things that i i plan for when i'm going out is i'll have a substance plan even just a loose and I'll, i'll always check in with myself and sometimes I'll check in with the friends and the people around me and like, what's our substance plan tonight? Yeah. What are you thinking? Yeah. You know, is it like a one great substance plan I used to always kind of bank on was like weed and Red Bull. <laughs> like, is it a weed and Red Bull kind of night? Like if it's a weed and Red Bull kind of night, if someone offers you something that's not weed or Red Bull, yeah. are you going to take it? Yeah. You know, you can just decide in advance what you're open to taking what your like hard edge is like if you're just if you're going to be really strict about it or if you're open i mean it's okay to be open um but i think to your point is like knowing what substances are number one um knowing your dose Mm -hmm. what what the effects have on you and then knowing the the um the interaction between substances especially if you're taking more than one yeah like you need to know that you yeah. you absolutely should not take a big bump of ketamine if you're like six beers deep no it's gonna give you the spins it's gonna black you out like yeah. that is that's a potent combo yeah same thing with ghb yeah like you just gotta know some basics yeah. before you start you know throwing ingredients yeah. into the pot so yeah. having, having a substance plan and 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 either planning to stick to it or being open to freestyling on it but at least you've got a home base 
mm-hmm. to, to riff off of. Yeah. Instead of just being like, I'm going out tonight and I'm going to take whatever and whoever is going to offer it to me is going to say yes to. Like, yeah. obviously not, neither of us are doing that. Yeah. But that's a, that's a really surefire way to harm yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Like I sat on my two CB for months and months and months and months and months. And I'm so happy that I did because at base coast, they had a testing site and I went to go get it tested mm. and it ended up being two CI, mm. which has a two milligram threshold dose, whereas two CB has a five milligram threshold dose. So if I took that thinking it was two CB at the dose of two CB, I don't know what would have happened. Well, yeah, I mean, it would have taken too much. A threshold dose. I mean, yeah. So you would have, you wouldn't, have, you wouldn't have, like, overdosed. But if I took it a would have regular been a dose, significant, yes, that's right. It, right. It, you would have accidentally taken. Like, imagine too I took much. ten or fifteen milligrams of two yeah. CI. Right. Yeah. That would have been crazy. So I think let's let's actually get into like our tips that we have for people who want to responsibly engage with recreational psychedelics because that really is the starting point like starting mm. point that psycho education and mm. we did a really great episode with dance safe that people can go check out i think it was episode 47 mm. <laughs> um if wow. i remember correctly but yeah like no like kev was just mm. saying like knowing what you're consuming, knowing the doses, getting it tested, um, just educating yourself on basic harm reduction. And this is why I appreciate like the rave community so much is that in general, people are pretty responsible and like know Mm. their stuff because you have to be, if you want to be safe, you have to know what has interactions. You have to know how much a dose is. You have to know how to time your doses with certain things, right? So that psychoeducation is like non-negotiable for anyone. Yeah. Like, I, I think that's a blanket statement. It, it is a non-negotiable. I, I think of it as like if, if partying with substances is an action sport, knowledge is your surfboard. It's the like, training. It, it's true. It's truly what is going to like literally help you navigate. Cause otherwise you're going to just show up and get like hit in the face yeah. once and yeah. not get back up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. so like knowing what your substances are, I mean, you can find tons of resources online. One yeah. that really hits for me now, it used to be Arrowid. If anyone is of yeah. the old, old yeah, days, that's a great Arrowid resource. still is pretty good. Yeah. One really tidy one right now is Psychonaut Wiki. Yeah. That's, it's got a Wikipedia format and it's got all the threshold yeah. doses and like really easy to access and inform- really actionable info. Mm-hmm. I find with Arrowhead, sometimes you need to like dig a little and yeah, it's kind of outdated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Psychonaut Wiki is yeah. like, that's what they were yeah. referencing when I went to the testing site. Oh yeah. Psychonaut yeah. Wiki. Oh, great. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that's, I mean, go like research. I remember when I first tried MDMA, I researched uh, and blue light, the blue light forums. Um, they're okay. Not as great as, mm-hmm. as Psychonaut Wiki. Um, yeah. I researched for forever and like built a whole like, you know, preload, postload supplement schedule. Yeah. I know we're probably going to talk about that yeah. too, but like, you know, learning, learning what a substance can do to you and like the basic harm reduction is really important. Yeah. I think self-experimentation is key. Like don't just like read about something on the internet and then just like go do a standard dose like start lower start lower start lower start low go slow yeah have patience yeah try it out i like to uh, when people try ketamine for the first time they're like i'm nervous i don't know how much what's a dose what's a dose and i'm like i don't know your dose either let's start with one that you're probably not going to feel yeah let's go there first and then just like be okay with not feeling something Mm -hmm. so at least you know that's too little yeah it's way better to know something's too little of a dose than to be like oh that was a bit much you know yeah yeah dancing is hands down my favorite way to get out of the mind and into the body it's so much fun it's great exercise a form of self-expression and a powerful integration tool And I have been attending music festivals for many years. It's my favorite place to dance. And I always notice people dancing with these fun toys that like light up. They look so cool. They look like they're having so much fun. And I've always been so curious about these toys. So this year, I have finally gotten into the world of flow toys and the flow arts. 
Flow toys are exactly what they sound like, toys that are part of your dance flow. My go-to place to order flow toys is from flowtoys.com. They carry the highest quality toys on the market, not the cheap stuff you can get on Amazon. And I love the people behind Flow Toys. Their mission is to inspire an illuminated lifestyle and to support the growth of the flow arts and the positive effects they have on life and the world. They're a beautiful brand that stand for love, enjoyment, and self-expression. I literally feel so magical (laughs) on the dance floor with my Pixel Whip. It's basically a unicorn tail that lights up. (laughs) This was my first flow toy, and Pixel Whip creates this multidimensional light show, sensually snaking and dancing across the body while simultaneously enveloping you in a cloud of playful pixie points of life. It's really magical. I'm also learning how to move with their pod poise, which can eventually translate to fire dancing, which is a dream that I have. So flow toys have taken my enjoyment on the dance floor to a completely another level. And honestly, it's just a really fun way to challenge the brain and the body to move in new ways. They bring so much joy, literally light up the dance floor and just add fun. Like we're also here to have fun, right? So flowtoys.com we're kind enough to give me a code for you guys listening you can use lana at checkout to save 10 percent off your first order so that's l-a-n-a go ahead and order some flow toys throw on some of your favorite music get moving and just experience the joy of life in the body so that's l-a-n-a at checkout to save 10 percent on flowtoys.com have fun i think that's another great point like start low and go slow Mm -hmm. like man like has anyone ever been like totally fucked up and like enjoy it? Like we're, it's just not fun. Like it's not fun Especially for anyone. It's not fun for your friends. It's not fun for the people throwing the event. It's not fun for you. Like mm. I, you know, there's a sweet spot. There's no need to like go totally out of control. It, especially if you don't plan on it. So, you yeah. know, like, especially if you're like, I accidentally got a little too fucked up. Yeah. Like that. I, there's, I mean, you know, makes mistakes, but like, there's yeah. very little excuse for that. Like, other than you know, you learned a lesson, yeah, and that's good. And I hope you get a lot out of the experience. But like, yeah, you should. I mean, moderate yourself. Like, especially if you're entering a space that that others have curated. Like, some spaces are more friendly to like being fucked up than others. And if you want to lean on those, those you know, those resources, especially if there's like a safe space or a sanctuary yeah. or something. Um, you know, that means that you can probably go a little further than you, than you would, but if you're just adding it, but also like checking your intention behind that. Yeah. Well, there you go. It all comes back to, it it really does all come back to that. Yeah. Like, are you wanting to like push your limits and boundaries because of something you want to get from that? Or are you doing that because like where you're at is just too painful and you don't want to feel it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, yes. Know you, know your substance. Know your dose. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Love that. Cool. Let's talk about supplementation because this is like game changer for me when it comes to MDMA specifically. Mm-hmm. I mean, I take supplements every day in general, but um, I find so roll kit's amazing. You guys have heard me talk about it all the time. The- so. Something like Roll Kit is really cool because they are they have developed a supplementation package that's backed by research and research shows that with MDMA supplementation, timing matters. So like when you take your supplements matters. So I love using that, but I also supplement on top of that. ALA has been a game changer. Have you tried ALA? Mm-mm. Yo, it's a game changer. I was I was really going hard on the ALA at Base Coast and I felt incredible after. What does it do? It's neuroprotection. Oh. Yeah, it's good for neuroprotection. Yo, yeah. slide me some of that. Sure. ALA. <laughs> yeah. Writing that down. You can buy that at the health food store, people. Oh, <laughs> one great festival supplement hack uh, I learned at Base Coast was creatine. Okay. Because because that's that helps you get um, the liquid in your muscles or whatever. I don't oh. know. There's some there's something it does. A lot of bodybuilders use it. Helps and I'm, I'm, retain the hydration. Yeah. I'm Interesting. Butchering the effect, but I tr- it's re- yeah. it helped reduce cramping. Yeah. And fatigue. Okay. That's all. Did the, you try I, it? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, cool. the, the the day that my friend James was like, "Here, try okay, this." Cool. I was like, "Interesting. Wow, I can go forever." 
Interesting. Yeah. And on that note, hydration is key. Dude, you're the electrolytes. Yeah. You got me on electrolyte tablets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I love to use like the noon ones. Yeah. I like Element as well, but with the noon, they don't have enough sodium. So I actually buy this brand called Real Salt, and you can like actually see the salt, like minerals. It's like black minerals in it. And so I'll do like an elect- electrolyte tablet and then like half a teaspoon, a teaspoon into like my big bottle of water. And it just, you feel it, right? It it's also so tastes good. hella good. Yeah. Feels good. <laughs> yeah. Way better than just yeah. whatever misc water is in your bottle. Yeah, you gotta you gotta supplement and never get distilled water because right. it lacks. Yeah, I remember once um, my friend brought like bottles and bottles of distilled water to a festival. We were like, cannot hydrate. Uh, you're gonna get dehydrated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Literally, you will pee, but you will yeah. not be hydrated. Yeah. Um, I also really like vitamin E. That's also good for neuroprotection. But just yeah. doing research. Maybe I'll link in the show notes for people. Um, the studies that roll kit references about supplementation i find it really helps and again it's that step of intentionality you're like planning to have as healthy and safe Mm. of an experience as you can you're setting yourself up for success and yeah that's just that's a huge one for me i love that yeah let's talk about intention Mm. Do you want to start us off with this one? Because I feel like you're so passionate about party intentions. Mm, yeah, I think partying with intention. I mean, doing anything with intention is important. And if you don't, if you don't have an intention, it leaves a lot of room for unconscious fear and like like drudgery to get into your system, and then you're you're operating on bad vibes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just like opening a space to create intention and to like interpret intention too. Cause you probably already know what you, what you want out of this experience or, um, I mean, one really great way to frame it is like, how do you want to feel today or tonight? Like, what do you want to experience? What do you want to contribute? What do you want to find? Um, answering any of those simple questions is is like going to help you have an experience that's meaningful um, rather than like feeling lost or just totally random. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and even if it's just a word, even if it's just the intention to have fun, mm-hmm. like fun, if fun's your intention, then just remember. It's always my intention. It's, uh, yeah. It's always, yeah. that's always the baseline of mine. I've always, I've usually yeah. got two or three. Yeah. But it's, you know, if you want to have fun. But it's coming from a place of like, I actually want to have fun. Not like I'm not having fun in life. So I want to escape that by having fun. Like I actually want to like fully experience the experience of fun. <laughs> I love that. And and like even just saying I want to have fun lines up so well with your um, earlier note of always yeah. building on top of experience and moving towards and not running away from. Mm-hmm. And it may sound simple. Sometimes we do an intention circle I mean, we, we often do intention circles mm-hmm. before we go out or before we take yeah. like a, a substance, especially like a long run substance yeah. like MDMA or LSD. And like sometimes people start on a monologue when it's intention time. They're like, you know, I really want to call in uh, this and that and this and that. And and hey, that's that's for them. And then some people are like, I'm just I'm just ready to like let loose and have fun. Yeah, that's a valid an awesome intention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What are some yeah. intentions that have worked well for you outside of uh, outside of having fun? Yeah, I always love to go to like express myself mm. through dance and just like use this as a moment of expression and self discovery. Like, what can I learn about myself? Like, it's so funny because so you got me into the bass. <laughs> you the got bass. me into the bass music. And I remember at a recent party that we were at, it was just like some crazy shit that I would normally not listen to. But I was just like, what is this? My body is moving in different ways. And it was literally like unlocking these new layers and levels within myself that I had never expressed or paid attention to. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. So I love treating these recreational spaces as a place of self-discovery and like unlocking what lies beneath that I usually don't have the 
environment and setting and just overall experience to like freely explore. Mm -hmm. So that's, I, I love that one. How can I express myself through the fashion, through the dance, through the, all of it. I love to go to laughter. Like I just want to laugh. Like there's nothing like a good LSD laugh. <laughs> yeah. 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 Laughter and sound distortion. Yeah. LSD. And then also like just connection. Like if I'm with a new group or with a friend I haven't partied with in a while, like I want to connect with you. I want to just like spend time with you. I want to enjoy this and make memories. So that's kind of where my mindset goes where when I'm setting intentions. The like there these are world class intentions. I love that. <laughs> oh thank you. I mean expression and self discovery is so potent. Yeah. It's such a good um permission slip yeah. when you're in party mode. Cause like you're in you're in a um uh, a temporary um society when you're out. I mean we're talking about like a lot of our party, when we say party, we're talking about music. We're talking about rave as well. Like yeah. that blends into this thing. Like, I mean, we only go to raves. Well, we, don't, we don't go to any other parties. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And like, like rave space is like a lot of, um, it's okay to be yourself yeah. and like, let your freak flag fly. Yeah. So like, like you're so celebrated for that. Yes. Yes. So these are like temporary, like heightened, self-expression moments yeah. so if you go into that and you're like, like use that yes right yes leverage it leverage it yeah, yeah. it's like i'm gonna you know but think about the opposite i always like to think about the opposite it's like if you were to go into that space and say i'm going to not express myself and i'm going to operate as if i already know myself you're just going to stand in the corner yeah and disengage yeah, yeah there's something about these recreational spaces that open up new layers that I haven't experienced through like ceremonial containers. Mm. It's like, Oh, there's actually this little girl inside of me that just like wants to have fucking fun and mm. she can do it here. Mm. Whereas like in a ceremonial setting, it's a little more serious. It's a little more about, you know, going like really deep into the nuances. I kind of like the contrast of it being like kind of light mm. and simple. I love that. That sounds like it fits really well with the idea of keeping a balance mm -hmm. and, and having seriousness and yeah. fun and, and like, yeah, yeah, doing both. Yeah. Like the last two years I stepped back into like rave culture last summer after a couple years off and I've kind of like organized my years by like, you know, the colder months are for like ceremonial experiences and deep dives and like summer, I don't want to do that. <laughs> like, whereas like a few summers ago, I was like so deep in healing that I was like at an mm -hmm. ayahuasca retreat every month. Mm -hmm. But now I'm, I'm in a different place mm -hmm. and it's about like finding what works for me when. Mm -hmm. So the way I've organized it is yeah, like the ceremonial like work, like when I'm there to work are kind of like those winter colder months. And then the summer is just about like having fun and being in these recreational spaces. Mm, I love that. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I haven't, I don't have any ceremonial work to layer in, which I, I plan on changing. Um, but you know, my, my rhythm is, is more about, um, festivals. Like they yeah. kind of punctuate my year as like summer months are, yeah. There's more festival action and that's like, you know, two, three, four day yeah. off site, more of like an extended full send. Mm -hmm. Uh whereas like the winter it's usually a little nights out. Yeah. Or, you know, lots lots more like chilling time as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And on the note of festivals, um, I think one tip for people is to really look out for more like grassroots festival experiences, like curated experiences that tend to be smaller and like really take seriously harm reduction and cultivate a culture of care. And you can tell festivals that do that. Mm. Whereas like some festivals, like we were talking about with Sarah the other night, they have like the dogs at the front and they like search you so hard. And, you know, there's this culture of like drugs are bad. Don't do drugs. And like the importance of um, mindset at 
when, when you are on substances is so important. So like if you're at a festival and there's like drugs are bad signs everywhere and you're on drugs, like that's just gonna, that's not cohesive to the experience. They're not, even though they know, know people, like what people are there to do. So I think for people who are listening that are like curious about these recreational containers, curious about festivals, curious about what they have to offer to them, um, yeah, just like look for look for festivals or experiences that really take harm reduction seriously. Maybe they have sanctuaries, maybe they have like an on-site team, but like you can tell when the festival has been created with care versus when it's like yeah, just a big commercial festival that mm. wants to make money and doesn't really care about the safety and the experience of the attendees. Yeah, I mean that ties into a, a boundary around um how you act around security and authority and um you know back uh, back in the day like 10 years ago when i was going out to lots of events um it was like pretty public but it, the harm reduction wasn't as much on the radar yeah. and it, a lot of the events were still like they you know they i don't remember an event where there was like dog sniffing dogs but there's often like you enter and you see a security person in a bulletproof vest and they are there yeah. to remind you to like drop your drugs in the amnesty box or yeah. hide them real good. Cause we ain't going to, we don't like the sight of them. Yeah. And like, you know, that's fair yeah, enough. Everyone inside is on something. Yeah. And so what it, what that does <laughs> it is just it doesn't just doesn't make sense. Like, I, I mean, you can still have fun in those containers. It just, it just, it, you need to install a boundary around how, um, how, um, what's the word when you're like doing something in public, how like auspicious, no, not auspicious, but, how like openly you're going to either be high or like take a substance yeah. um like how much in public you're going to do those things that that's a, that's i mean that's a boundary well that's you like keep in mind. set and setting that's literally set and set setting, and, setting. Yeah. and i i guess my point here is that some of the mainstream festivals that i've gone to they don't really take set and setting very seriously. And we know that set mm. and setting, regardless of which container you're in, are extremely important. Yeah, with substance yeah. use. Yeah, totally. Yeah. 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 Yep, love that. Cool. Let's talk a bit about just like fuel and nutrition and sleep and like that whole part. Oh, basic body maintenance? Yeah. Which, you mean that's important? Yeah, which people forget, don't they? Tell me more. <laughs> Yeah. How do you how do you well, keep it going? Well, we talked about the electrolytes and salt makes a huge difference. Like always with, you know, the healthy snacks. I love my oranges. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I go for like what is it? Nutrient dense snacks. Yeah. Just remembering to like actually fuel your body if you're dancing for like 15 hours or yeah. however long, but like remembering, oh, the baby food little packets. Oh, yeah. Jenny taught me that. Just like, yeah, yeah, just like remember to fuel your body. It does make a difference in how mm. you will feel the next day. Um, energy balls, you know, I think I think all that's really great. You, you can't just have vibes for dinner. You can't have vibes for dinner. N not, not multiple days in a row, at <laughs> no, least. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Vibes that keep you going so far, but it's, they don't yeah. make a great dinner. Yeah. If yeah. you if you put like a nutrition facts yeah. label on vibes, it'd be like the vibes, <laughs> like it'd be a hundred percent, but then like vitamin C it'd yeah. be zero. Yeah. There's no you vitamin C in add vibes. Some oranges to that that's bottle right. of vibes. That's right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> add some oranges to your vibes yeah. and you'll you'll max it out. Yeah. And then with with sleep, so this is something that I really struggled with for a long time. Like mm. you mentioned seeing sunrises. Yes. I used to and I think this is maybe because my relationships with my relationship with these spaces changed, but like I used to get so freaked out seeing the sunrise and I felt like, I don't know. I just felt like such a degenerate. Yeah. And I think that's because I kind of was you one back in were. the day, but yeah. I've like really re reworked my relationship with sleep and like just accepting that like, okay, it's going to be a 5 a.m. night. Like I'm going to see the sunrise mm -hmm. and you know, I'm going to sleep in the next day until I wake up and my body will bounce back. And I can do this. I've really had to make that mindset shift because I used to have so much anxiety about the sleep side of things. Mm. Are you like that at all? Or how do you mm. handle the sleep? Yeah, I never... And also just sleep. Just yeah, sleep. Just sleep. Make sure you sleep. Just sleep. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I mean, my relationship with sleep is 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 already 
kind of dubious. Like I find it, uh, my regular sleep rhythm isn't strong. Like I, I find it difficult to like maintain a regular sleep schedule. So it's not a huge thing when I, when I go out, but I do, I do need it. Yeah. And I do know I need it. And I do inevitably, like when I crash, I know that I'm crashing for minimum six hours. Yeah. So if I go to bed at six, I'm like, well, don't plan anything before noon and don't plan yeah. anything within three hours of waking yeah. up anyway. So yeah, like I know it's coming and yeah, I definitely don't avoid sleep. Here's the thing with, here's my thing with sleep is that I know I need it and I will let it come. And I know when it's coming. Mm -hmm. Some people actively are like, I'll sleep when I'm dead no sleeping this weekend. Yeah. Like I'm going to avoid sleep. I'm going to drink a coffee or an energy drink just to keep it going. I'm going to artificially yeah. skip sleep yeah. in order to keep going. Yeah. And like, that's something that I definitely avoid Yeah, unless there's a really good reason. And I can't think of a great reason right now. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That has to be a boundary within yeah. yourself. Right. Of yeah. Like, okay, I'm going to start winding things down yeah. now because I actually need to sleep. I yeah. love to go for like, the natural sleep supplements like valerian root and melatonin mm. that really helps me a lot and makes me get that like good quality um yeah. sleep that really makes a difference yeah. in the recovery and also creating space after right like creating space just like after every psychedelic experience for this maybe it's a little bit more about like the body recovery but that space and creating the space for that is so important yeah. 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 You need to recover. You need to you need to fuel you need your body to keep going. Yeah. yeah. That's it. I mean, look, like if you never had to pee, sleep or eat, you would party forever mm -hmm. or you'd work forever. Or you'd keep doing like your body's just like a natural stopgap. And like just if you've got to pee, like don't be like, oh, man, I got to pee. It's too bad. Like, I wish I didn't have to pee. Like, no, it's like it's time for a pee break. Time to check in with yourself yeah. when you got to pee. Body break. Yep. Body break. Yeah. Or if you're tired, be like, well, like maybe you've been up for a long time yeah. and it, you should probably sleep. Like yeah. just listen to your body. Yeah. Listen to your body. Yeah. Check in with the body. Even if sometimes we are so disconnected from That's our right. bodies. Your, yeah. your body whispers loudly. Yeah. It's there to hear. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the most special things about these recreational spaces that we're talking about today is how much responsibility people in them take for the spaces. And there really is this like beautiful culture of care. And I think that's, that's a tip that I have for people just like to take responsibility for the space that you're in mm. for yourself, like keep an eye out for your friends. Like we call it rave fam for a reason. Cause like you are a little family to make sure that everyone is safe that everyone has what they need and to just like be oh, I'm getting like goosebumps talking about this mm. but like yeah just to like <laughs> but just like yeah just like keeping an eye over people like I will mm. often see people that look really fucked up and like I'll go up to them and like hey how are you doing like would you like some water can I refill your water bottle like here's some fruit you know just keeping an eye out for people because that's what makes these spaces so special. Mm, yeah, that's great. Like, yeah, just not being selfish and being like community oriented is, yeah. is like the way to be. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I mean, I was really inspired by, um, my, my business partner, Karis, um, like what up Karis? <laughs> she's sitting right beside she's us. Sitting <laughs> in the room. Um, like, when we went to Harvest the first time, and Harvest is a is a boutique festival in Ontario. Love it's like yeah, it's a really great experience. Like um, she volunteered at Sanctuary yeah. for like yeah. like the most busy hour of one of the like weekend nights, and like and when I first saw that, I I couldn't really comprehend it. I was like, yeah. oh, that's full send time. Yeah. But then I realized that was her way of contributing to the community and. Like using the vibes. Put the cam on Karis for a yeah, second. Just like rotate, <laughs> insert shot of Karis blushing. Yeah, and like shout out, shout out to like Farah, Farah like Sila. Yeah, she was at Base Coast, and she's gonna be at the one that I'm going to this weekend. Mm -hmm. I mean, she yes. she she started blue. Yeah, you know, yeah. so you know that that's gonna have yeah. some solid roots and. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like 
if you if you make space to care for others, that just makes it really safe for them to experience yeah. even more fully yeah. these these spaces. Yeah. Yeah, like remember a friend at Base Coast that came to the hammocks? He was like, oh, he like tied our shoe, but I was helping him like 10 minutes earlier and then he ended up feeling better and like came and hung out with us. And that's right. You can really like turn someone's night around. Well, and I, and then I like an ancillary to that experience, like, cause that was like, that was like a joyful person who you had helped out and he came over and yeah, gave him baby food. <laughs> yeah, right. You brought him back to life. And then in that same hammock experience, I remember someone else came over and sat down. We, we, oh, Oh yeah, who was, the guy who was very high and yeah. was not belligerent. He was very yeah. like soft and loving and, and innocent, but he was very high. Yeah, what did and, you guys do? Oh, gently pointed him towards sanctuary. Yeah. Simply, merely suggested it yeah. at the right time. Yeah, because you don't ha- want to make people feel wrong. Don't want to make him feel yeah. shamed. And we accepted him sitting down, just like right, yeah. like literally sharing a hammock with us for a minute. And yeah. then once we figured out how high he was, and he was on a number of intense psychedelics. Cocktail. Like a, co- a potent cocktail. Wow. Like doing doing a half of what he was doing would get, get you real, wow. real kooky. Um, we were like, well, he just, he needs to sit down, obviously. He knows that. And I think he's open to suggestion. And I know to point him at sanctuary. Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's where you can go. Mm-hmm. And, and he, we watched him just walk on over and sit on the couch and someone mm. put a glass of water in his hand. Nice. You know, I mean, he would have been fine in that space, like in just chilling in the hammock otherwise, but knowing that there was somewhere to send someone like that who needed what he needed, which was just a safe space, no judgment yeah, and probably some water. Yeah. And, 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 and then to also like ride out this massive trip yeah. <laughs> that he was on. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, safe spaces are, are yeah. so important. But safe spaces are created by everyone. They are. Yeah. They're co-created. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you, yeah. you got to participate. Like It's about your energy. Yeah. And who it you really are. Is. And like how loving and accepting you are. Like and what you you're bringing. Yeah. You don't need to be on first aid duty or on vibe patrol no. to, to contribute to a safe space. You could just like make the most of the experience for yeah. yourself yeah. and contribute those vibes to the yeah. space. Like if you're, if you're like, if you're like fully sending it and you're like, yeah. you know, being the heartbeat for your own vibration, that's you're committing, you're contributing to that safe space as much as, as someone who's volunteering with the vest who's giving out water. Yeah. 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 It is easy to overwhelm harm reduction services yeah. and teams. Like, yeah, we've heard, we've heard a, a few like, like behind the scenes reports of like people saying like, oh, wow, like. They, like people are really sending it at this festival. Yeah. Like we're kind of maxed out here. Yeah. Like you can't just take for granted that harm reduction is there and just yeah. just go get sloppy. You still need to ha- take responsibility for take yourself responsibility. and what you're what you're. It's a, it's a safety net. It's yeah. there for you, but you don't need to jump right into the safety net. No. Like go try to try to fly. Yeah. <laughs> don't just jump off the cliff and be like, I'm going into the safety net. Here I go. Yeah. Yeah. Like go give, get just yourself. Glide. glide the, yeah. Flap around a yeah. little. And I think another note on that is like just taking responsibility for like consent culture. Like I really appreciated at Base Coast how consensual the crowd was. Um, even like, you know, vibing with someone on the dance floor and like dancing with them for a few minutes. There's this real feeling of like, I am me. You are you. We're like sharing a boogie, but like there was no, you know, getting into spaces that isn't your own. And yeah. I think that that's like something to also take responsibility for as a recreational um, dweller, a recreational dweller. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We talked about this on, on one of the party zone episodes with, with me time. Yeah. We talk about safe spaces and um, yeah. Consent is such a huge factor because it's not just about um, do you, like, do I have consent to come near you physically? Yeah. It's like, am I aware of your boundaries? And am I aware of mine? Am I aware of how much space I'm taking up? Do I need that much space? Um, if I do, am I, am I like aware of someone around me that I might be impeding on? Consent is so often just used in the, in the um, context of sex and, uh, and mating and attraction and like dating and stuff like that. But it's also like, dancing 
um, and taking up too much space and, and like, just cause you haven't looked at someone in the eye and either nodded or shaking your head doesn't mean that you're not imposing on right. someone's personal space. Yeah. So like just being aware of what you're taking up yeah, in terms of point. space, whether it's physical space, whether it's auditory, like but people will talk about fan clacking, for example, <laughs> I know it's a contentious issue, but it's a, I love fan clacking. It's a, it's a case in point. It's a case in point because that there's a boundary yeah. that a lot of people feel like, like doing in someone's ear. Yeah. And then, so there's a, cons, there's consent yeah. in play there. Yeah. Like, have, are you, ha, do you have consent to take up what it like, is yeah. kind of an ear the splitting whistles, people with the whistles <laughs> yeah loud sounds yeah you know so how much space are you taking up in yeah. the auditory yeah as well as your physical yeah. planes yeah i think part of also keeping safe spaces is like um like keeping your friends in check like we had this moment at base coast right where um no names <laughs> there was an oversend and like there was a discussion about it right mm -hmm. like if you see a friend doing something mm -hmm. that doesn't seem safe like maybe they're dosing or mixing or just they they overdid it like just it doesn't have to be judgmental but just have a conversation with them about it check right? them yeah check them don't check body em. check them yeah. Check them. That's what friends do. <laughs> yeah. They keep each other in check. And it's yeah. not keeping someone in check isn't keeping them in line. Yeah. You're not like, whoosh, get back in line, like follow the rules. It's like, hey, like, did you mean to do that? Yeah. Like, I, I noticed that you maybe didn't. Mm -hmm. And I think I know you well enough to say that I don't think you did. And, um, yeah. you know, are you sure? Like, how are you feeling? Like, are you okay? Like, do you want to maybe adjust your behavior next time? Yeah. yeah. Hold that safe space. Yeah. Be vibe yeah. patrol for your own people. Yeah. Yeah. Super important. Okay. And then, so the last tip that I have here, which we touched on uh, the, debriefs, <laughs> the debriefs, which is part of the integration process, but just like, yeah, taking time to reflect, like, did you make any mistakes or did you have some um, errors in judgment and what can you learn from that? It's okay. I mean, Right. Like hopefully n nothing fatal or like close to fatal is happening. But like just like what can you learn? What can you be more mindful of next time? Uh, that self-discovery piece, like what did you learn about yourself, about your like preferences, like what you love, what you enjoy, what kind of music really gets you going? Like what surprised you about yourself? What did you discover about yourself? I know that you love like how can you bring the party spirit into everyday life? Like what parts of this peak experience do I want to weave and bring into my life and how can I do that maybe that's like going into your tickle trunk and like integrating some like tickle trunk gear oh, into yeah. your everyday wardrobe like I am right now with this beautiful scarf but yeah like how how can you do that I love that yeah, accessories are a great way to to bring the spirit along with you just little reminders yeah little visual reminders well you're so good at this how do you bring that into your life well it starts with a debrief and yeah you ask any, <laughs> it all started with a debrief <laughs> it began one rainy night I was debriefing in the back of an Uber uh, the air was thick and hazy um, classic Toronto air <laughs> yeah it was the fires were burning there was a smell and that smell was skunk <laughs> skunk and raccoon poo um yeah i mean I, like the yeah the debrief is great and i love and i those questions are awesome and it's just like you could it can be as simple as like what's a highlight what was yeah. a low light or a lesson yeah and what do i what do i want to do moving forward how do i want to be and simple. then just trying it out like yeah. experimenting with anything in your yeah. life like using a new word yeah you know like just Taking something swerve. with you, swerve, swerve <laughs> was a word that, that, that was, it's, and it's such a handy word. I yeah. use swerve now. It's like a concept for me. Yeah. It's, it's a bump. Swerve is a concept. Yeah, swerve. Yo, swerve. We want to do a video for you if you're listening. Swerve, shout out to swerve. <laughs> swerve, uh, swerve Supply Co. based out yeah. of Calgary. They got some really swag yeah. gear. Yeah, we are obsessed. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be talking, swerve. Yeah, swerve. We'll be swerving I am way. the camera. <laughs> we see you. This vape break brought to you by Swerve. Oh, oh, too deep. It's going to go in the bloopers. That's a boundary. Oh, oh. Know your limits. Play within it. Vape within it. Uh, yeah. No, I think, you, I think you said everything. I mean, like just making space for a debrief. Yeah. Being mindful, like on the way in and on the way out. 
And hey, man, like, that's how you should live your whole life. Yeah, maybe you like really love the sense of connection and community that this experience granted you. Okay, so how can I bring more connection and community? You don't have to go to a rave every weekend. No. You can host a dinner with people you had this experience with or other friends mm-hmm. and have that same sense of connection and community. Like, make mm-hmm. it your own. This Take is a about dance you. class. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, wow, like, I really like hip hop. Yeah. Damn. Oh, I want to take hip hop classes hip-hop. so bad. Yeah, me too. Do you want to take Because I kind of like, I feel like when I dance, I have this kind of like hip hop attitude. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> right? Like I, like, um, I want to like get into crumping. Yo. <laughs> and like breaking and stuff. It's like, uh, you, you kind of like learn. Imagine that to like skeptical or something. Yeah. Oh. I had skeptical's mad drum and bass. Yeah. Yeah. Like you just like follow through. Yeah. That's all. Follow through. Yeah. Yep. Complete the experience. Complete it. Complete it. Tease it out. Yeah. Find a find find a seat. Like, what's the sequel? Like, what's the yeah. next experience you want to have? How do you yeah. want to build on it? Yeah. Yeah. These are great tips, Lana. Did you come up Thank with these you. yourself? I did. These are yeah. all from experience. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Is there anything you want to add? Anything you, know, you feel like you want to talk about? I think we've we've I I, I I've talked enough. I think we can go for we'll do we could go for hours here. Yeah, we could. Uh, so I think maybe we'll do a round two sometime. Yeah. And bring it bring bring it back to the people. Yeah. This is this is hefty enough to digest. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, I hope that this was useful and fun for people. Um, obviously, this isn't meant to like encourage any dangerous activities or illegal. We are not condoning illegal, illegal states of mind. Yeah. I just think like we talked about this on the Dan Safe episode, but like. People have been doing this forever and they will continue to do it forever. So why not provide them with the psychoeducation so that the experiences can be safe and informed and consensual rather than full of judgment, which is going to greatly influence the type of experience that they have. So that's kind of where we're coming at with this episode. Mm -hmm. And I really would encourage people, if you are curious about recreational containers, if you're already engaging with them, to take the time to create some boundaries or rules, right? A fence for you to play within Mm -hmm. that works for you and makes sense for you. I shared mine with you today. They're not meant to be yours. Just wanted to share my process of going through it so that we could discuss how it's been useful. But please go ahead and make your own that makes sense for you. Even a blank page has edges. (laughs) Remember that. (laughs) <laughs> Unless it's like one of those infinite scrolls on uh, like Photoshop or Miro or something, but even the blank page yeah. images will leave you with any any uh, any any final um, m- oh mon- any mantras any anything it, w- that's one thing. Here's one thing. What a little bonus takeaway here. Maybe we can end with that. Um, is um, the idea of like yeah intentions, but but also a mantra like a little phrase to repeat to yourself Mm -hmm. sort of to kind of keep yourself on the go. Mm -hmm. Um, Something that's worked for me is to follow the fun, follow the fun. Yes. You always say that. Follow the fun. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's a built in, that's a built in little like guide post. Yeah. If you're ever stuck within your boundaries, that's right. Know your limits, play with it, (laughs) play within it. Yeah. Play on. Yeah. Play on. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. That's great. Perfect. Well, thanks for doing this. This yeah. has been so fun. Me me too fun was had. <laughs> we likey. We likey very much. Yeah, it was it was a good time. And I hope that the audience had fun getting to know you a little better. I think you'll be back on soon. Yeah, in the future. That's yeah. great. Thanks, thanks thank for you all, the, all for listening. <laughs> thanks for all the work you're doing to help us Aww. with the show. Yo, know, if you like this if you like this video, give Lana a thumbs up on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening. That's YouTube. That's Leave a YouTube. rating and review on podcasts. Smash the like button like it's pumpkin pie. Okay, and you're not going to deal with my marketing. <laughs> Let them know you like it. There's a reason you're BTS, uh, Kev. It's, they're going to love it. They're going to love it. Okay, and scene. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening, everyone. And I love you all very much. Stay safe. Stay true to yourself. Follow your energy. Follow your fun. And express yourself. Yeah. Bye. Express yourself. Thank you so much for listening to and supporting the show. To stay in touch, sign up for my mailing list, which can be found in the show notes or on modernpsychedelics.net. 
If this episode sparked something within, please let me know by leaving a review of the Modern Psychedelics podcast on Apple and Spotify. This really helps to share these messages with those who need them, which is the whole reason why I do what I do. And if you haven't already, come join the ongoing conversation over on Instagram with other beautiful souls. We have an incredible and conscious community over at the handle Modern Psychedelics. And don't forget that the work begins after you come back down to earth. And I'm standing shoulder to shoulder doing it with you.